Well, hi everyone. I wanted to do an update about this massive landslide that took out a bridge, a relatively new bridge in Sichuan, China. And I want to respond to, there was a constant theme of comments uh, from people that were really off base in terms of what the engineering objectives are for a bridge, oddly enough. They seem to think they could parse out the bridge separate from its environment, which obviously you can't do. So I'm going to go over that. Also, I have to correct the location. Uh, that was breaking news when I did that story. And apparently there's hundreds of bridges of this honky name throughout China. And I was off a little bit in the location. So I thank uh, the channel viewers who corrected me on that. So I think they've got bigger problems here than just replacing the bridge. I'm going to go over that here in this video. So as I mentioned in the previous video, this failure occurred November 11th, 2025. I'm recording this video on November 25th, 2025. And it was quite a spectacular failure. You could see dust and debris blowing around from well above the bridge on the slope. And as I pointed out in my previous video, this points to overall geologic instability of that slope at the abutment of this bridge. And there were warning signs a day or two before this failure occurred. You could see cracks in the pavement, and this was apparently noted by locals in the area. And then the officials shut the bridge down in time. But going back to this notion that Oh, it was, the bridge was fine, you know, it was that pesky landslide, you know, and who knew that could happen? And you have to account for these things when you design engineered structures. It would be like the Teton Dam failure saying, well, the dam was fine. It was the problem with the foundation with uh, seepage in the joints of the rock. And of course, nobody said that. Or a dam failure that I've covered, this was in the summer of 2024 rapid dam in Minnesota due to design issues but primarily due to lack of proper maintenance water levels rose from flooding in the reservoir and ended up overtopping the dam which eroded out the left abutment and caused a catastrophic release of the reservoir and I had people in the comments for those videos saying well the dam didn't fail it was the abutment that eroded out well abutment is part of the dam so Again, it's not appropriate to parse these things out. But as I mentioned, they've got far bigger problems with this situation in this area of China, I believe. So let's look at this overall location. This is on Highway 317, which leads from Sichuan to Tibet, the Tibetan Plateau. Quite mountainous, rugged area. Tough location to build anything, really. And it turns out this bridge is being built immediately upstream of a major dam. And of course, when I say major dam, I mean world's tallest dam. This will be over 315 meters tall or over a thousand feet. And I just kind of wonder how compatible a structure of that height is for this region of the world. Again, I've got some more information on that. But this dam has been under construction for over 10 years. You have a large earth fill section and then concrete facing on the downstream face. Some of the details of this dam, as I mentioned, it's Actually, 312 meters tall or 1,024 feet when completed. It's going to be a hydropower dam with 2 gigawatts generating capacity. And all the turbines are expected to be in operation by 2027. Just a cleaner map, you can see that this Jangjuku Dam is located just downstream of the Honki Bridge that failed here in November. And they started impounding water behind this dam May 1st, 2025. Now, there's a very special case of slope stability analysis. It's an important case. And that's called rapid or sudden drawdown. So if you think of a dam impounding water in its reservoir, and then that water level fluctuates due to seasonal variations, but more importantly, if it's drawn down suddenly through operation, either water discharge through the outlet works, or typically through power generation facilities, you can cause instability of the slopes all along the reservoir rim, as well as on the upstream face of the embankment. And we can see that with hydropower projects such as Three Gorges Dam, they operate the reservoir in a rather dramatic fashion. It's up, down, up, down, up, down. They let the water level in the reservoir rise to its max operating level just at the beginning of essentially the power generation season. And then if additional flooding occurs, they're sort of in trouble if the water level is high and they have to 
increase their discharges, which causes a lot of downstream flooding. But the point of this graph is to show you the widely fluctuating reservoir surface levels. Now there was a dam failure in 1963 in Italy, a Viant Dam, and it killed nearly 2,000 people. And it's a situation where the dam structure didn't fail, but there was a massive landslide uh, slid off this mountainside into the reservoir, creating a wave over 800 feet in height, which overtopped the dam and caused massive rapid flooding downstream. That's what the dam looked like before us, what it looked like after. You could see the scars from the slope failure along the reservoir rim there. This is a downstream town, Longarone. The before picture on the left, the after picture on the right, just wiped that town off the face of the earth. So you can imagine they've already had landslide problems with this bridge project that failed a couple of weeks ago. And it appears that they didn't do an adequate job doing a geological assessment for the conditions at that side of the uh, highway bridge. And the geology is quite complex throughout the region. And this is known as the Longman Shan region. Now I've got links to a lot of these key references in the description of this video in case you want to check it out. And one of these links shows more details of this honky bridge that just failed. And you can see that the bridge piers are on what I would presume to be drilled shaft foundations. It's not likely that you can get driven piles very far because of no doubt uh, presence of hard rock. But again, those details weren't included in this information on this website but some pictures of this bridge during construction. A bridge like this could not be expected to be designed to withstand the impact of a bunch of slide debris, soil and rock coming off the slopes. They're, they're just not designed for those dynamic loads. So if you wanna have a bridge that's functional and isn't taken out by landslide, you have to do a lot of work. You have to install soil nails or, or rock anchors this is what they're doing along the repair for I-40 in North Carolina. You can use benching on the slopes. So these are flat areas, so you don't have one continuous slope from top to bottom. There's a pretty good uh, rock slope design guide from Ohio DOT. Again, I've got a link to it in the description. Other things you can do to reduce the domino effect of debris sliding down the slope and mobilizing more and more debris, which could take out bridge structures or cover roadways. You can use these uh, catchment systems, steel netting, to collect the debris before it gains a lot of momentum going down a slope. You can do what's called scaling, where you knock the loose material off, the rocks and other soil that could pose a landslide hazard. You can see they're moving big pieces of rock off the hillside here. What one of these soil nails looks like, they drill them in, stall them in a top-down fashion. But it's not clear if they had implemented any of these methodologies to stabilize the slope near this Honki Bridge. You know, maybe just the overall geology is highly unfavorable. And one of the terms I used in the previous video is talking about the dip direction of the rock units. It could be the bedding planes, it could be the joint patterns in the rock, but it's the angle of the structure. And I said, you don't want rocks dipping or the bedding pointing towards the roadway or the bridge, it could be very difficult to produce, to provide enough stabilization under that scenario. Ideally, you would have rock units or joint patterns that were angled or dipping away from your structure. But the fact that these slope conditions apparently caught them by surprise and took this bridge out doesn't bode well in my mind relative to the impacts of this downstream dam. Again, you're gonna have reservoir surfaces that fluctuate. You could have massive landslides that produce essentially these giant waves that overtop the dam and produce massive flooding downstream. To me, it's quite concerning. And just the notion of having to replace this bridge is perhaps the least of their problems here. So, and I didn't even touch on the earthquake hazard. This is a high seismicity area. There's no indication that this landslide that took out the bridge was, was triggered by an earthquake. So a very complex situation. And I think it's a situation apparently where the government of China is motivated to do bigger and bigger projects, but may have not fully taken into account its environmental setting, its geological setting, and what the overall 
interaction is between the structure and the environment. So I'll continue to provide updates on this story. And with that, I want to send a shout out to those of you who contributed to buy me a coffee. That's one of the better ways to support this channel. I also want to thank the channel members who typically preview these videos one or more days before they're made public. And I also want to thank those of you who have contributed to Super Thanks. So stay tuned, everyone.